It's almost like a little mini town in here. I'm making content. This is like my job now. I get asked all the time why I'm making a YouTube channel. How's it going? I'm Justin, Justin Khan from Justin.tv. <laughs> What's up guys? It's me, Justin Khan. Today I am driving to sunny Napa Valley to go meet up with my YPO forum. For those of you who don't know, YPO is like a group for CEOs. It's organized into chapters and each chapter has forums and then your forum of you know six to nine people. It's kind of like a support group. You meet every month, talk about what's going on in your life, the top 5%, the bottom 5%, uh, really get vulnerable and you have a sounding board uh, to work through whatever personal or professional issues are going on for you. And so uh, luckily I slid in the DMs when I was a CEO of a company, not any longer, uh, but I still get to be in the forum. Uh, thank God, because it's a great, great group. Uh, and this is the first time we're meeting a person in a long time because of the pandemic. You know, everyone kind of moved to different places, they've been traveling and obviously we couldn't really meet uh, in person very easily. So uh, we finally get to after months and months and months, and I'm pretty excited to see everybody. And we get to do it in Napa, which is great. Thanks for joining me. Got here. Carneros, let's go see what's up. It's got this farmhouse vibe. Like I wandered into a rustic, very expensive farmhouse. All right, we checked in. Let's go. This is kind of cool here. We're in the hotel now. It's almost like a little mini town in here. These little sidewalks, individual cottages. It's pretty cool. Now to find a hilltop pool. I think we found it. Look at this little lane. Up to the pool. The registered hotel guests only. Luckily I am one. Okay. Marissa, what's up? Good to see you. Hello. How's it going? All right, we're doing a little YPO retreat, like I was saying. What's so, up, Jason? Hi. We got content creators. Yeah, I'm making content. This is like my job now. This just makes my heart so happy. Thank you. See you guys. All right, Thank cheers. You. All right, we're getting this pool. I wonder this thing is waterproof. Very refreshing. Now we're going to get changed and do our meeting. Our friend Anthony's joining from Zoom, which is bonkers. Bonkers. We finished our meeting, and now we're exploring this Carneros oh, grounds. Yeah, ranch. All right, Chris, how was the meeting? The meeting was great. It was great to be in person with real people. Real people. Real people that you can touch and feel. Uh oh, Sep. Oh no, it's fine. <laughs> You're permitted. This is a pretty big house. Not a wine I'm not seeing any sort of wine machine. I do see a Buddha head. All right. Well, that's been a fun day. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why I'm making a YouTube channel. I get asked all the time on YouTube, off of YouTube, friends, they're like, why are you doing this? Why does Justin want to create a YouTube channel? And the answer is, well, there's a couple of answers actually. First, I just love creating content. It took me a long time to realize it, uh, years and years and years, but I love making content because it's a very creative pursuit for me. Thinking about like, what kind of content can I create? How can I tell a story? How can I make this interesting to other people? It's very activating. It's just, it's just a kind of creative side, just like I watch friends of mine create music or write. It feels a lot like writing to me, to be honest. It's a way to convey a different message or story or lesson. And I have a lot of fun with it. I didn't used to think I was a very creative person, actually. Uh, I remember years ago, probably over 10 years ago, one of my friends who's the founder of this company called Scribd, Trip Adler, uh, he was like, Justin, you're one of the most creative people I know. And I thought to myself, I said like, no, I'm not. I'm a business guy, you know, I'm like, I don't think I'm that creative. And that stuck with me because he had been seeing my entrepreneurship in this very creative light. Whereas I had always seen it as just, I guess I thought creative was like, you know, create, creative pursuits were like these special pursuits like writing and music or something like that. But I really find that I've come around. I think I am super creative and I feel that YouTube has really helped me embrace that side of myself. 
Uh, so that's number one. Second reason, I think influencers, creators, whatever you want to call them, but personalities, media personalities are the future. People follow people. I've been saying that for months. And I think that was a core insight that we realized at Justin TV was that, you know, I thought this was before social media back in 2006. I thought people would watch a live stream of someone's life, even if they were just doing normal guy shit. It's because people are built to be curious about other people. This is not news anymore. Look at anyone from the Kardashians to Emma Chamberlain, Casey Neistat. People are interested in following the lives of other people. They could be doing interesting things. Usually that's a good framework for getting people interested in clicking. Uh, but then it's really just following who's that authentic personality, who do I connect with, and finding out about them and feeling like they're a friend. And I think that we have only touched into the power of that. You know, a lot of my friends who are creators are, uh, you know, they're selling classes or, or they're selling clothing lines or energy drinks or whatever it is. And those are great businesses. I have friends who have clothing lines that aren't influencers and friends who are influencers who started clothing lines and the, the former, they're very small and it takes them years to build up like even a, a small fan base and the latter, it's like they turn it on, boom. They're in business, they're selling tons of clothing and they have a real business. You know, I have been thinking about this more and more. Like I think we're moving to a full stack media environment. What I mean by that is on YouTube, someone like me, Justin Khan can be, we're not just a talent, you know, so far as you can say I'm talent, but we're also the production company and the screenwriter and the producer. And we're also eventually going to be the sponsor, right? Creating our own brands. I think that's different from the previous media environment where you were just the talent. You didn't really have a direct connection with your customers or your fans or your, your followers. So what does that mean for the future? Well, I've been encouraging my friends who are business people, who are athletes, musicians, I mean, musicians are already doing this, but basically been encouraging all my friends to figure out how do I build that direct channel uh, to my customer base? How do I become somebody that people care about? You know, how do I become a voice in this industry? And because I think it's going to be so much powerful for driving sentiment, getting hires, you know, even my VC business, I've seen this as you know, my day job, I'm at Go Capital investing the firm I started and we win deals because people want me to be involved and they want me to be involved because I've spoken authentically about succeeding and failing on YouTube. I like it that I would fund. It's almost like a preview of the kind of advice uh, that they can get, especially in this media environment where more and more of media is out to get you. If you're a technology entrepreneur, they're trying to figure out ways to spin the narrative against you, which wasn't always the case. You know, now people are saying, well, the big companies, these fan companies, Facebooks, Amazons, they're big monopolists and, and they're like doing all these bad things to people, but they're also saying that about like startups. Uh, you really have to own your own channel. And especially in the media environment where you know, the media is out to try to figure out ways to write a negative story about you. It's really important that you be able to, as a CEO, as a founder of something, be able to talk directly to your customers, your fans, your potential customers, without your message being disintermediated by someone who wants to write it in a way that's very negative or toxic for you. I remember a couple of years ago, I talked to a reporter who was writing an article about my co-founder of Justin TV, Michael Seibel, a CEO of Y Combinator. This reporter was clearly digging for ways to like change the narrative. You know, everybody who knows Michael is like, Michael's great, he helps founders, he loves founders. The reporter would constantly bring up questions about what were the bad things about YC that I had seen, or basically subtle ways of asking if I had any dirt on Michael. Unfortunately, that's the media environment we live in today where negativity sells, especially if you could write something negative about somebody who was known. So very important to have your own channel. Uh, the last thing I'll say is I often get asked, well, what about the hedonic treadmill? You know, you spend all this time trying to disconnect from having these external motivations that are driving you sometimes relentlessly. So aren't you worried about getting back on that treadmill with number of YouTube subscribers or number of views on your videos? And the answer is for sure, it's a situation where I don't want to get back on that treadmill. And in order to make sure that I'm not doing that, I often check in with myself and ask myself, how do I feel uh, right now? You know, am I doing this for likes? Am I doing this for views? Or am I doing this because there's genuinely joy in the video I'm making? And one of the questions I often ask myself is, would I do this if nobody watched? Uh, when I first started my podcast, The Quest, I didn't promote it for the first three months. I spent the first three months just recording the episodes with friends of mine and various guests. And then I just put them out there and I didn't promote, I didn't even look at how many views it was getting because I wanted to test, would I do this if nobody was watching? And thankfully the answer was yes, I had some great conversations. I really loved doing it. And so, 
you know, I was sure that I was doing it for the right reasons. So if you're out there and you're thinking about like, why am I doing this? You know, am I, am I doing this just to, for external motivation or approval? Check in with yourself on that. Ask yourself that question. And that's a great test. That's a little bit about why I'm doing YouTube. I love YouTube. I have a lot of fun with it. I hope you are having fun with my channel too. If you like it, smash subscribe, ring that bell, and we're gonna be coming at you with more content, better content. We're gonna figure out some more interesting dynamic things to do. I'm really enjoying making these vlogs and uh, I'll get you next time.